Hello everybody, how's it going and welcome back to a Supreme Leader Great War kind of thing. I'm a bobber. Uh the game's not even out yet and I've already made two videos on it, so that's that's uh that should uh, that should really uh show to the game's uh immense power over me. If they've they've taken me. Um and uh and Battle Goat now has has my family. So please watch and like this video so Battle Goat releases my entire family. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh so uh, a lot of my viewers have no idea that the Battle Goat forums exist. Um, quite a few, actually. A lot of them are like, oh, where can I find this? Where can I find that? And I'm like, oh, Battle Goat forums, Battle Goat forums, Battle Goat forums. So uh, this is a wish list. Uh, so suggestions and feature requests and stuff from uh, the community at large as well as a fellow on the forums uh, whose name I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. I will put a link to the forum post in the description. If you are not a member of the Battle Goat forums, you really should sign up and become a member. Uh, or at the very least, you know, like bookmark it and check back, even if you don't sign up, at least to read some of the posts because some of them are interesting. It's also where you get mods. Uh, how you install mods is on there, like a step-by-step -step guide uh, on how to install the mods. Maybe I'll make a video on how to do that because some people have been asking me how to install um, mods. It's bullshit easy for Supreme Alert. Like, there are some games that are just really hard to install mods for if there's not, like, you know, Steam Workshop or something with them because the games are just stupid. But uh, Supreme Alert is actually really easy to throw mods onto uh, for the few mods that do exist. I wish there was a bigger modding scene for Supreme Alert, if I'm totally honest, because there's only, like, maybe a dozen mods at best that actually work and, and make significant changes to the game that are worth doing videos on and worth actually like trying and playing. Uh, but anyway, that's another story for another day. Um, yeah, so he has a, a quite a quite a list, actually, of uh, things that he suggests and people are suggesting for features for The Great War. And uh, I just wanted to briefly go through them all and just kind of uh, give my two cents on them, as well as expose the post to, to my own audience and uh, hopefully others as well, and then hopefully advertise the Batacote Forms a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Also, you know, he gives my two cents on some of the updates, and I know, Battlecode, I know you're watching. I know you're watching. You've proven that you're watching. <laughs> You've commented every time I've mentioned you to say something. You have you have left some sort of uh, indication that you were watching me. Um, I think it's less so they're watching me to like enjoy my videos, and more so just to make sure that I'm not like saying that they're satanic. They are, but just just I think that's why. Um, anyway, let's get to the actual point. So there are 23 points currently. Uh, he does say there are more to come, so uh, you know keep checking back and see if there's any more uh, that people have suggested or he may have thought of. Uh, but I'm just going to go through these uh, briefly. So number one is coal and oil burning ships. Uh, very important resource uh, shift in the era, but he doesn't think the engine can handle this. I disagree. I think the engine could handle this. It would take a little bit of uh, tweaking on Battle Goat's end, but it wouldn't take that much because you just have to basically add in um, uh, ships that do uh, coal burning and ships that do oil burning and maybe some steam-powered ones on it. Well, so that's coal. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's doable. Um they would just have to have certain research um, tech tree stuff to go in that switch coal to oil and then have oil burning ships, uh, you know, come into play with research, researching uh, oil burning ships um, instead. So I think that's totally doable. Um, the engine could totally handle that. Uh, I mean, you couldn't have coal spewing out of the ships, but you could have ships that run on coal, ships that run on oil. It'd be a nice, it would be a nice shift, actually, because, it, you know, at the start of the game and stuff like that, you would have to be making sure you're up with coal production and make sure you're up with, with all that. But you also have to pre-prepare for, for the oil boom uh, that comes in, like, the, um, uh, like, later on in the war, but mostly in, like, the 30s uh, when, you know, there are cars and stuff, yes, in 1910 in the 20s and stuff, but they really came into fruition in the late 20s, early 30s, and that's when oil really started to take over. So, like, in that era, I mean, this, they, they said this is going to go into the modern day. So, you know, you're going to have to have that shift somewhere. Um, they could do this with a lot of other technologies. Um, you know, the, the increasing demand for electric power, the uh, switch over from, <clears throat> you know, certain uh, types of, um, of war machine stuff, like, you know, Obviously, they're going to do planes and all that kind of whatnot, but they could do different tech stuff uh, in a smart way that has has it transition rather than just abruptly change. You know, like like the coal burning thing. It's like okay, slowly the 
ships change over. Like, you know, you're not going to change an entire fleet within a day. Um, they could have it so... Uh, once you have oil burning, you could take certain ships into port and have them upgraded uh, to to oil burning. It makes them a little bit stronger, a little bit faster, or something like that. Maybe you know stuff like that. That'd be kind of cool to see uh, in 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 uh, this game to change it up a little bit. Uh, number two, make the Suez Canal, Bosporus Strait, Strait, and Singapore Straits UN international zones like Gibraltar, which functions fine. To, excuse me, to prevent ships of neutral countries being attacked. Regions that hold shores will be able to attack enemy ships in international. God damn it, I'm burping all of a sudden. Uh, regions that hold uh, shores will be able to attack enemy ships in international waters anyway. I think it's a good idea, actually. Because one thing that th that was annoying is it's a bit better in, in certain games, depending on who you're playing as, but the Suez Canal is a big one, uh, and the Panama Canal, which won't be here in this game because it didn't exist. But uh, the Suez is a good one. Um, have it being international would... Um, significantly improve everything. Uh, not being able to be attacked by, like, you know, the, the Egyptians and stuff like that in the Suez, uh, although at that time I think it was Britain, but, uh, you know, stuff like that would be kind of nice. Um, not a huge feature change, but it would uh, it would make quite a difference, in especially in war, uh, make a big difference. <clears throat> Number three, expand the Battle for Atlantic feature to every coastal region. By doing that, we'll be able to hunt merch, uh, merchant marines of enemy regions in oceans and seas adjacent to their so uh, shores, colonies included. Uh, um, eh, yeah, okay. But the Battle for Atlantic feature and stuff like that in Lake Supreme Lord Ultimate and whatnot, uh, I find didn't really make that much of a difference. Yeah, my ships went a little bit farther out to sea than they usually would if I was European or, or American, uh, but realistically it didn't change that much. If I had my ships on full... Uh, like auto move and fight and stuff it really I didn't really notice much of a difference um, I know some people are really into the sea combat and stuff like that But it's never been a thing that I've been really that interested in all I needed was my planes and a couple of submarines to sink shit And I've been pretty much cappy naval supremacy has never been something I've ever stri strived for so to me eh, eh. Um, I, I don't the battle for Atlantic feature is cool and all but uh, is it worth expanding um, I, don't, I don't really think so. Um, I think it would just piss me off more, to be totally honest with you. <laughs> if I'm, like, playing as Spain, and all of a sudden a ship from Panama decides to blow up one of my boats, I'd be like, what are you doing here? Um, but, you know, that's just me. I, I, I don't really see that as that great of a, an idea. Number four, which is one I won't talk about at all. Further polishing of di diplomacy. Actually, you know what? Never mind. I lie. I will talk about this. Supreme Leader Ultimate's diplomacy sucks. <laughs> it sucks ass. Uh, I think it was the last episode of Hirohito's Japan Empire thing. I tried to do a di diplomatic offer with somebody, and they loved me. I forget who it was. I think it might have been the Inner Mongolian who has uh, there in... You know, I think we were trying to do military access or something like that with one of these countries anyway. Um, I think it might have been them because I was going after the last of the Chinese that I was at war with. But anyway, uh, they loved me. They they were green. The government, their people liked me. There was no uh, war justification reasoning thing. The volatility bar was zero. So, you know, they, they liked me. There was no reason for them to uh, decline uh, embassy and military access. They declined it. it was, there's no chance. I even put money into the deal. Nothing. Not even a maybe. Not even a moderate. Uh, so I find the Supreme Ruler Ultimate's diplomacy is fucking awful in comparison to, like, even 2020, which is sad because 2020 is quite an old game now. But 2020 at least made sense. If you couldn't get it, if they hated you, you weren't going to get it. If they liked you a little bit, you could add money or, or resources to it, and they probably would do it eventually. Um, they uh, even had, like, a, uh, um, you know, they're going to accept it. Uh, hit this button and it'll put what they will accept, you know, the minimum amount they will accept, and then you can judge, like, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? You know, it was more, uh, it was simplistic, sure, but it was more flushed out. It, it worked better. I find Supreme Ruler Ultimate's diplomacy, I'm not doing diplomacy in Supreme Ruler Ultimate anymore. Like, I just don't do it. If they're in my way, I invade them. <laughs> That's it. You know, it's just pure invasion, and, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to see a further polishing of di diplomacy, uh, even if it's a step backwards, technically, back towards, like, 2020s uh, style, uh, it, I find it worked better. So, yeah, further polishing of di diplomacy would be nice, because, again, Supreme Lord Ultimate just seems dull 
to me for uh, diplomacy. Everybody just does not want to accept anything. Uh, or they are your best friend ever, and they will accept literally everything, even if you attack them. Uh, so, yeah, a, a more polished, flushed-out diplomacy would be uh, nice to see. Um, yeah. Number five, AI more active in building industry if profitable resource hexes are available or goods are required. If money, of course, and IGs are available. Yes, uh, I think that would really help the AI stop being dummies. Um, the Supreme Leader Ultimate AI is the smartest yet. Uh, it actually has some major challenge to it if you suck or if you're playing as a nation that doesn't have a massive military to the start. Um, like it, they, they can be smart enough to actually surround your units in, in places. They are smart enough to, to be able to um, attack with the correct unit type, correctly defend themselves a little bit, even use aircraft properly, uh, which is something 2020 doesn't do. The only time they use aircraft is if you attack an airbase. That's it. With Ultimate, they actually come after you if you're going after, like, a an important town. Uh, for example, uh, there's a few times that I've attacked, like, Minsk, and I've been bombarded by massive Soviet airstrikes uh, because they don't want me to have Minsk, even though Minsk is not an airbase. So... It's nice to see that. It'd be great if they continued to improve that by having the AI actually build things. So, okay, uh, I'm the Soviets. I've been pushed back by the Germans into, uh, you know, past, uh, you know, a certain point. They're getting close to, to Moscow, but I'm still, I'm defending the line, but I'm not successfully pushing it. I'm just, I'm holding it. AI on the German side, smart enough to build some more military goods and then some more land production facilities to compensate to get the units to invade and take over me finally. Yes, I'm defending successfully, but the AI is smart enough to see that and build some land fabs uh, and come in and, and take me out. Um, that would be nice to see. Or the AI... Uh, is n noticing there is a significant shortage on oil, uh, and their units are stuck in the middle of, like, Serbia, you know, the Greek units or something, right? So the Greeks are like, well, shit, okay, we don't have any oil in our area, but uh, let's make plans to invade some other country that does, Bulgaria maybe, or continue invading Serbia, or say the United States is doing a full-scale invasion of Mexico, as it does, and it starts running low on oil, it starts to build oil. I think that'd be a great thing to have, because it would make the AI smarter, it would make the wars not only longer, but also more interesting, because they're actually trying to win instead of just trying to defend and not get kills. So, that'd be, that'd be nice. Um, six, AI building supply depots in unsupplied areas, especially on road and rail hexes. Yeah, I kind of agree with that, but I don't at the same time. Um, I don't know. Uh... I think the AI should just not be stupid and go into areas that don't have fucking supply in the first place, but if... AI building supply depots fixes this anyway, then fine. That's I'm fine with that. Um, I, I can deal with that. But um, honestly, the AI should just be tweaked so it's not dumb and doesn't just go and you know invade Siberia when Moscow is two feet to their south, but they go up north and get no supply and then they're fucked. I think that'd just be better. But um, whatever. Seven, coal used by population heating when some techs are reached, usage of coal is abandoned. We talked about that earlier with the oil burning in ships and possible other technologies being uh, coming over, so I won't, I won't discuss that one anymore. If you want to hear me talk about that one, go back to the start of the video. <laughs> Um, eight, hexes can change loyalties to region owned slash ruled by over time, influenced by social spending, taxes, GDP, blah, 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 blah. So basically like, you know, uh, rebellions, coops, stuff like that. They have that with partisans in a little, a little bit. Uh, I really hate Partisans. They're fucking stupid. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but it's not a great idea, really. Sorry, I got interrupted there. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. Hex is changing loyalties and stuff. I hate the Partisans anyway. That's what this just sounds like to me is just more Partisan stuff. Um, <clears throat> I think that the Partisans should be more influenced by stuff like social spending and not just, uh, upping my police budget. Uh, like, if I'm spending a decent amount of money on social stuff, then they should slowly, like, kind of come over to my side and stop partisaning. Uh, I've even noticed that in Supreme Leader Ultimate, um, I've, I've upped, in a few uh, um, scenarios, I've upped my uh, police spending to max, um, and, and in fact, moderate taxes and all that kind of stuff, and partitions were still popping up left, right, and center. So it'd be nice to have those a bit more regulated, at least. Uh, number nine. Player can change government type to all existing types when elections are lost. Also, can change government type anytime if monarchy, theocracy, or dictatorship. That would be kind of interesting. Um, 
that would that would be kind of interesting. Uh, the uh, uh, Hearts of Iron kind of has a, a thing like that. You slowly change your government as it goes, and eventually there's either a coup or an election, and then you take over and boom. Uh, but having that would be kind of nice because just having a military takeover if you lose uh, or um, if you have a popular enough vote as a democracy, you know, like change it over. Uh, but also having like a coup, if that happens too, would be kind of neat. You know, people like, oh, shit. Donald Trump won the election 80% to 20% or something like that. The 20% rebels, now there's a coup and, you know, California broke off and there's no war with us. That'd be kind of neat. Uh, that'd be cool to see. Um, yeah, I, I, that's a good idea. 10. Max number of units per region is capped by AI stands. Population with GDP. Oh, and GDP. When cap is reached, no additional units are built. During the peacetime, more units are in reserve. When a region is at war, unit cap limit is off. When the war ends, excess units are placed in reserve and offered to allies, friends, and neutrals before it's being scrapped. When new units are researched, rotated ones, red dot quality being AI, blah, 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 blah. So basically, uh, there's a max cap until you're at war. After you're at war, these units go into reserve, or and you can give them to allies, or like um, basically like kind of like uh, Hearts of Iron 4's uh, lend and lease and stuff. Um, it's not a terrible idea, but I don't know. Max number of units I don't like. Uh, very much because the max number of units thing the problem with that is if you're a nation uh, in between say a bunch of larger nations like uh, say you're Portugal um, or e even better say you're like Belgium okay uh, or the Netherlands or, or even Switzerland uh, one of the bulk uh, Baltic Balt blah, blah, Baltic or Balkan nations too you're kind of sandwiched in a bunch uh, the, you know the um, the Balkans have it a little bit better because there's a bunch of small nations. The Balkans are really fucked. Uh, if you go to war with Latvia, okay, you're only gaining like a million, two million people from taking Latvia over, and that's if you do it successfully. Once you're at peace with Latvia, you know, you go back down to a certain cap number of units for your GDP, which is low. You know, they're lower than, than other developed nations in the area. You know, they're lower than uh, than Germany's. They're, I think they're both close to the same as Poland, but Poland does have a higher population. And of course, the Soviets... Russia has much higher population, so their cap's going to be quite a bit larger. So, you take over, say, you know, you're Estonia, you take over Latvia, you take over Lithuania, your cap's not going to go up that much, because your GDP is going to stay pretty much the same, and your population's only going to rise by maybe two to three million people. So, as soon as you go to peace, after you take those two nations, it shrinks. Your, your military shrinks. So, what happens then? You either have to think it over and navally invade somewhere and go quite far to do that and hope you can do it because the merchant marines um, aren't the greatest invaders if there's any kind of army uh, sitting in that port. Um, they can, they're can they pretty stupid. But uh, say otherwise, you're, you're fucked because you can't go to war with Poland unless you get lucky and the Germans destroy Poland and you just kind of get in on the action. Uh, and you definitely can't go against Russia. You probably can't even go against Finland, to be totally fair. Now, you might be able to medievally land in Finland to take it over, but it would, it would be a struggle. It would be a struggle. So I don't, I don't like that, because it means you can't get ahead. Like you, you can't get ahead. Population, I understand, because you can't have an army of 50 million with a population of 10 million, but the reserve um, recruitment uh, they already have uh, already caps that anyway. So, uh, you know, certain countries can only really pull from their population base so much. That's why they have the reserves and why you can't, like, you know, build, like, 50 billion land uh, fabrications and 20 million units uh, all at once in a small nation. You just can't do that. You don't have the reserves for it. You have to wait for those reserves to build up as your population naturally increases or you take stuff over. Uh, so that's already in place, really. The GDP thing is, is, doesn't make any sense because you have a lot of nations, especially in Europe, with varying GDPs. Like you have France with a huge GDP next to, you know, Italy with a smaller one next to uh, Baltic uh, Balkan nations that have low, very low uh, overall GDPs comparatively. Um, so that's just that's not going to work. Um, I don't think that that's a really great idea because you're never going to get ahead as nations in the Baltics. You're never going to get ahead. You, you could get ahead in the Balkans um, if you take over your neighbors. But if you want to ally any of your neighbors, you're fucked. You can't. You have to take them all over to get ahead at all. Um, and even then, your GDP probably won't improve that much. Your population will, yes, but your GDP won't. So 
you know, uh, same with the Koreas. Uh, if you want to play as North Korea and try to get ahead, you're not going to. Their GDP is very, very small. Their population's not too bad, but compared to the modernization of, of South Korea and, of course, China and the Russians, there's nowhere for you to go. So, no. I don't, don't max the number. No, don't do that. I don't think that's a smart idea. Um, leave it how it is. The, the reserve thing that you currently have is fine. <clears throat> just, just, just do that. I take it. Take a drink. My voice is just failing me. Okay. Number eleven. Max unit production facilities are capped by AI stance population. Chief. Again, no. Twelve garrisons are getting stronger over time. Tech research as a trigger to be competitive with other infantry units. Close to attack. Close to defense. Um. Yeah. Over time because they're going to modernize their weapons a little bit more, but also you're going to modernize yours. So basically make them tougher if you're too stupid to research modern weapons and stuff. So if you're you're in the 60s or the 70s even, right? Uh, and you uh, just you just don't, you know, you haven't upgraded. So you still have like cavalry, motorized infantry, and like really shitty World War II tanks, okay? And... You're attacking somebody modern, like uh, modern Japan, right? Their infantry is going to just tear you apart because they've got modern guns, they've got shit like modern mortars and rockets and artillery, and you don't. I, I think that's a good idea for that. Make them tougher, yes, but make them scale with the research, right? So, like, they're just... If you have the modern stuff for the 70s, the garrisons are going to be just as easy as when you had modern stuff for 1914. I think that's a good idea. Uh, 13, AI capable, uh, capable of building air bases and airfields close to borders to be able to uh, project air power when it became available. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. Um, you know, some planes don't have the range, especially in the early days, they don't really have the range, so AI being smart enough to build air bases close to borders that they know they're either at war with or going to be at war with is a good idea. Um, you know, it gives them some air superiority, at least on the first part of the war. You know, it gives gives some back and forth there. 14. Naval AI, please naval AI. Yeah, I mean, I've said I haven't played much with the Navy, but that's generally because, one, the AI is stupid, uh, and two, I just don't care, but having good naval AI would be a nice thing, because the naval AI is kind of retarded. They just kind of float around in the ocean, even when you have them on full uh, AI takeover. They just, they're idiots. Um, yeah, that that's, that's it. I agree. 15. AI missile build sequence is hard-coded and needs serious revision. I don't use missiles that much, so I don't really know. I'm not going to comment on this one because I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to assume it's a good idea. Um, I don't really use them that much, and I know stuff like nukes, which he does mention here, uh, are going to be quite a bit down the line, you know. Uh, we started in 1914. You know, nukes aren't really a, a prevalent thing until 1940, eh, 43, 44, and they aren't even historically used until 45 so yeah i mean i'm not really sure uh on that one i, I don't you know, i don't use missiles enough to uh to know uh the real uh, repercussions there 16 financing opposition may result in coops yes 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 i think that's a fantastic idea i don't even need to read the last rest of this fucking thing uh i think that if you're financing an opposite opposition party and they are you know like in the 40 percentage range or even a little bit higher and stuff like that they should be able to stage a coup i think you should be able to help them stage the coup i think you should be able to lend them units if they really need it i think you should be able to join them in the war and i think you should be able to have them in your own like faction kind of thing you know your own ally circle yes coups everywhere all over the place all the coups i think it's a great idea i think it would even add some uh, some stress to you uh you know if you're looking if you're not a dictatorship or something like that or even if you are a dictatorship uh you know noticing these little groups and stuff popping up and having to either suppress them or make sure that you know where they're going to coup at and stuff like that and being ready for those i think that's adds a bit more to it uh yes coups all day long please thank you 17. Supplying arms to opposition results in guerrilla spawning and non-loyal hexes. Teach I how to do this to regions it hates. Um, yeah, partisans suck enough, but if you're going to have partisans be as shitty as they are now, uh, at least have a reason for it, and have the opposition being, you know, fueling these. I think, I think that if they're going to have the partisans be as, just as dicks as they are now, have that as the reason. Um, 18. AI not spending units to unsupplied hexes. Yes! 
This guy's my dude best friend. I mentioned this before. AI not sending units to unsupplied hexes. He uses examples. Sahara, Siberia is the biggest one I fucking run into. Saudi Arabia and Tibet. In mass without building supply depots as it advances. Yes, 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 yes. Have them advance into fucking areas with goddamn supply, not in the middle of goddamn fucking nowhere, and have them, yes, smart enough to build supply depots. He mentions this kind of before, but this makes the more sense, honestly, to me. <laughs> because they, they draw drive into Siberia, just fucking just straight up north towards, like, Murmansk, like, way up north in Siberia, when fucking Moscow is right there. Right fucking there. And it's on capital. Like, I, most of my games I play on capital. Like, fuck. They, they're so stupid. And, like, the Trump campaign is a really good example. Uh, the final episodes, the final two episodes of the Trump campaign, units move from the front line in actual Siberia, where there was supply to go towards the capital, left, went south to Iran, moved up through um, Turkmenistan, formerly Turkmenistan, into goddamn nothing. 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 I didn't tell them to do that. The AI should be smart enough to not fucking do that. Yes, 100% yes, that should be the only thing. If they take nothing else from this list, take that. Take that, please. Because, my God, they would improve the game tenfold. All of my complaints would be out the fucking window. I would not complain about this game if that happens. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Enough ranting. 19. Internal migrations. Population migrating from empty hexes to city and industrial hexes. Yeah, okay, that could be, that could be kind of good. Could, it could be good the other way, too. Um, say if there's, like, an empty area that you want to supply up because it's closer to, like, say, a front line that you might be in the future and you build a bunch of industrial uh, facilities or, or whatever there uh, and the population starts moving to them because there's jobs. I think that's a good, I think that's a good idea. Uh, having the population move around to where you're building stuff, right? I built a whole bunch of uh, oil and gas facilities. This town becomes a city all of a sudden because everybody's moving there because there's jobs. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Um, yeah, yeah, something simple, but great, great idea. 20, AI knows how to liberate and colonize instead of annexing only. Yes, 100% there, don't have anything else to say about that, I think they should. 21, encouraging independence of colonies can spawn guerrillas. <laughs> sure, why not? 22, AI will send peace offers and accept peace more likely, even if engaged with combat, especially if low on units in losing situations. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Um... There, it's rare that I want to send peace offers for that, but there are some instances. Say, I'm taking over a nation just because I need only, like, 20 kilometers of land to get into another nation or, or combine my colonies or something like that, and I just bull them over all of their units dead in the first, you know, few months of the war, and they, they then accept surrender. Uh, I think that's a decent idea. Uh, Total War Room 2 has an idea like this. If you destroy a couple of armies in, in, a, in a nation, they are more likely to surrender to you because they don't have the units to fight you. They know they're going to lose. So they're, they're more susceptible to peace. They're more susceptible to client states. I think it'd be cool, too, if um, AI sends peace offers or if you send a peace offer to the AI and they're more likely to accept it. And if they're really losing and they're smaller or something like that, uh, and you're just greatly more powerful and they know they're pretty much fucked, uh, that they would accept, like, say, colonization or, or uh, client state stuff, you know, stuff like that would be kind of cool. Um, that would be nice to see, too. And the last one, for now, 23, ending wars with losing loyal hexes may force government change. Uh, yeah. I think it's a good idea, too. Um, so, like, say if you... Uh, send a peace offer to somebody, they accept peace, their people are like, wow, you guys just got us really fucked up, and then they just had, they have a government change because they get impeached. I think that'd be a good idea. Or there's, they, you could even um, put this into coups too, right? Like, uh, you know, they, they go to war with me, they lose terribly because I'm just way better than they are, uh, and then their people basically get really pissed off, but certain people are still loyal to the government, and then there's a coup and a big civil war and rebellion and stuff. I think that'd be a good idea too. Um yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Um, so that's it for the list for now. Um, let me know what you like on it, what you don't like on it. Again, link in the description. If you don't want to just listen to me ramble, you can just look at it yourself. And uh, if you have any other suggestions, post it here or post it on that post. Sign up for the Battlegood forums. You can post on that post with your own suggestions. He will add it if he, to the list if he thinks it's good. Battlegood is watching that more than they are watching my videos, believe me. So if you really want to have Battlegood hear you, that's the place to post, not really here. But I mean, you can message here too. If you post it there and here, there's a, even more of a chance that they will see it. I'm Again, I'm sure Battlegood is watching this. So, yeah, 
Uh, but that's it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, very excited for this game. And, uh, yeah, I will see you all next time. Peace.